So today we're checking out the Darth Microtransaction and Gazi TV interview we they had with Jonathan at GGG. There's supposed to be some really interesting stuff in there and I'll give my opinion on some of it. It's not going to be the entire interview. I'm not going to do the entire two hours. We're going to break it up and I'll just talk about some of the things that I find most important. Hopefully you enjoy it. How are you doing? Um, pretty good. Uh, you know, obviously the response to the uh, live stream we did was kind of crazy. Um, like the... Uh, it's, yeah, I mean, I don't know, even know what we really expected, but uh, certainly we, the, the, there seems to be a lot of hype. So uh, yeah, we, uh, that's a bit, it's a bit scary, but I think I'm, we're doing pretty well. It was actually pretty nuts. Like when I was watching the, uh, the reveal stream itself, I was sitting on the edge of my seat like a child. Like I was so excited. The answers to, but one of the general questions that I had for you was, it seems like there's been more and more an emphasis on exploration and world building. In Path of Exile too, you know, you saw things like the skulls on the maps is one such example you've used for this before. So I was kind of hoping you could walk us through the process that happened when you guys started to realize we really want to have more of a focal point on exploration in the game. So, I mean, to start with, with the story stuff like that, I mean, like, you know, we really want to make sure that we're doing better than what we had um, in POE 1 with regard to story. Like a lot of people get through POE 1 and they never even realize what it is, like what the story even was. But as for exploration as well, I mean, like, there's just, you really want to have that fantasy of like, you know, of, of well, I mean, you're playing a fantasy game, right? Like you're just like, and I think exploration is a huge part of that. So there was a um, thing that happened, you know, in terms of like the, you know, the icons on the map and everything like that, there was kind of a, a moment when we realized that um, people just, uh, people actually didn't realize how much content there was in the game. Um, like there was a situation where like, you know, pe people would like walk past things, they wouldn't know that maps contain stuff. So we're like, okay, um, you know, uh, when people are dying to bosses all the time, there is stuff out there for them to find. They're just not actually finding it. You know, they don't know that it's there. That was that was one of the biggest issues for a lot of players. Well, for me, the Path of Exile wasn't very beginner friendly. Like it wasn't very like um, you had to put a lot of time into it, which is which was really good. It was really good for me. I like my games to be a little bit harder. I like my games to have a little bit of grind. I like my games to have a little bit of difficulty to them. But the problem with Puff of Exile was that it wasn't that it was extremely difficult because if you had enough, if you, if you had a good enough build, you could blast through little much everything in the game and you just like, it, it, it wasn't that it was hard. For me, it was more difficult to really figure out what was going on and what was happening and what could actually be done in the game. As he's saying there, there was a lot of times where I didn't even know that there were things in certain places. And I could be playing for years and years and years and still find things that I didn't know were there. And especially when you're not looking at content on YouTube, if you're not looking at some of the guides and stuff that people have up there, then it's something that you don't really find every single time. So um, the icon on the map thing was just like a really good step towards actually making it so that you realize, oh, you know what? This is actually a game where if I explore, I will be rewarded. And there's been quite a lot of other things like that, that we've done as well. Like, you know, we've, we've tweaked the random level generator. We've done like a, a, like to make it so that you've got things like where when you if, when you come to dead ends, we try to make sure that there's stuff in dead ends for you to find. I mean, showing the, the, the icons on the main map. So you can, if you're looking for a specific kind of content, then you can find that content and you can do really well with that content. And you can like, if you're looking for something very specific, uh, like if you're looking for a, a boss that maybe drops a unique, you're looking for all kinds of different uniques and you want to try and see if you can find something that can work towards your build, like the, the thematic build that you're doing. I, I don't really play like meta builds. I, I don't ever play meta builds in games that I play. I like to like not off meta, but I like to thematically build a character. So I have an idea of what I want a character to be. And I want that character to be uh, like, for example, in... Puff of Exile 2, I want to make a Chrono Lich kind of build. The Chrono Lich build in my head is going to be a sorceress build that has minions. Now, I don't even know if that's going to actually work in this game because no one actually knows what... I mean, the people that played it previously, like Darth Microtransaction DM actually played it. I'm sure Gazi TV has already played some of it as well. And there was an LA event a while ago where people got their hands on with stuff. They probably didn't get too far within it. I think DM mentioned that he only got into Act 2. But while he's like actually doing that stuff, I want to know if like maybe you can let me know down below because I've been trying to find out this information. I've been theory crafting with my friend next on what can actually be done. Now, I have the idea that weapons actually control the skills that you can use. So if you're going to go down the scepter route, you can actually go as a warrior and use a scepter and have minions and make a death knight kind of build. Maybe work towards uh, some more magic, uh, like magic sword focused, but we haven't got swords at the moment. So it'll be maces from the start. 
but kind of like I have a death knight build where you can have an ice build that has minions and uses melee now it might not be the best build in the world and it might not be completely meta but but it's thematically built to make something look like to make you enjoy the game like I, I don't enjoy I didn't enjoy Path of Exiles when you did a build where it just you press one button through the whole thing and you just steam through a map in seconds maybe if you're farming stuff later on and you're not actually you're just looking to get it done as quickly as possible you can switch your build around so you can switch your build around from like your thematic build that you enjoy playing when you're going through certain things when you're fighting bosses when you're doing that sort of thing and then if you're farming you can switch over to another build which kind of will the weapon swapping thing might actually make that a little bit easier and also the fact that we can respec using gold now it depends on how much that respec is going to cost over time how easy it is to get gold it might be that if you're farming a load of stuff you can actually get a lot of gold and you'll be able to respec back and forth as you see fit now i'm hoping there is actually a, a thing in the game maybe it's been somewhere maybe it's going to get said in this interview but i'm hoping there's a way that you can save a spec you can save a build and then you can jump between builds maybe have like a drop down list like an armory where you can have different builds and you can just click over to it and it will give you a full cost of what the respects and the cost and i'm hoping there'll be something like that in there i'm gonna stop talking now uh, and of course there's this like the particular encounters that we have like uh you know like like every area we try to have like two in some cases there might even be three like sort of just like handmade like little things you can find and we're actually keen to expand on that as well so um one of the things that i'm keen to do is to have a larger um uh, a larger pool of these kinds of things in the game than what you get um, the first time you go through an area and they can be random and then we could even consider having it so that um, when we do the uh, you know when we go between leagues the set of them that gets picked for each uh, uh, for each area could be randomly selected from those like we don't have that at the moment but it's like something that I'm very keen to do because um, I think that you know obviously replayability you know it's uh, an action RPG it's like a huge thing um, by having more of these things you just want so like every time you go through the campaign you just get a feeling of like oh there's stuff here I haven't noticed before there's stuff there I haven't uh, the, 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 you know like just little things and I think those little things really um, contribute and we even started doing that a little bit um, with uh, POE 1 uh, once we sort of realized we wanted to do this stuff um, even with POE 1 we started saying okay every league when we put one out we want to have like 20 30 just like tiny changes to the campaign that we can do just so that next time you go through it you just sort of feel like hey um, you know like here's just something random that I never noticed before and I think that that's like it's funny because it's not really a headline feature like when we're announcing the you know a POE 1 uh, league it's not like saying oh here's like a bunch of these little things uh, like it doesn't really uh, get anyone very excited but I think that when you actually play through it there's just that feeling of like you know oh man I never saw that before and it just kind of gives you just a better experience so I think that feeling of just like you know just finding random stuff is 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 is, is really important and we want to do that as much as we can I'm really happy they're actually doing that for for the exploration and the story side of things because I do love running through the campaigns in the ARPGs. I even kind of enjoyed the Diablo 4 campaign. Um, Diablo 3, I kind of skipped. Uh, I, it wasn't really on the horizon at that time, so I wasn't really into Diablo after Diablo 2 years and years and years ago. Uh, there was other games that came out that I was playing at the time. I started getting into survival games and stuff like that. So it was a little bit different. But the fact that they're putting more of a focus, not fully, but on the exploration, on the running around, trying to find different things, on the, the fact that there may be things that you don't know are there, but it's going to have more of a direction with the icons that are going to be put on the map. So um, when you're going through the different maps, you can find different things and maybe you don't miss something out. But for me, when I'm playing, I, I'm actually just going to like, when I go to a map, I go through the entire map. I get make sure that I find everything on that map. Every single thing you can possibly find. I clear a map 100%. I don't just run through to the boss and blah, blah, blah. Uh, so like I probably do some live streaming for the release of Path of Exiles 2, where it's more focused on finding everything that you can in the game. So if there's something that interests you, make sure to subscribe because there'll be a lot of that coming to the channel. And a commonly asked question is that if we're going to be able to search and look up, say, monsters and their abilities in-game, sort of like a Necronomicon or Wiki in-game, can we expect to see this? Um, this is something that I'd be super keen to do, especially... This is a really, this is a really, really good question. ...because of the fact that some of the uh, monster models are so awesome you don't really get to appreciate them from game camera perspective like uh you know so like every 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 weekend um my friends come over um and i like to show them like you know hey here's what we've been doing on uh, poe2 recently but the thing is i've got the tools i can like open up the what's called the asset viewer and like hey look at this cool monster you know and, like show them close up and like hey look at... and uh, there's also the funny things like the animators make all these idle animations uh for the monsters that you basically never see uh like with a bunch of character to them and stuff like that that are really awesome and the players never see them because obviously you never see a monster not attacking you um so like there's all sort of stuff so one 
day, and we don't have this in the game right now, but one day I am very keen to make an actual sort of beastery, uh, you know, of, of, of like, here's all the monsters of the game, but like, a, you know, we can actually see the model and like appreciate it a little bit. And, I, and then obviously when you do that, then that would be a great opportunity to be able to show like, well, you know, various abilities and things like that. It'll be sort of handy, I think, for people who are wanting to play specters and, you know, to be able to have a big list of all that stuff. So I think that'll be a really cool thing to do one day. But uh, yeah, we don't have it at the moment. I just think it'll be really awesome to kind of show off the work of the artists who uh, have made all these awesome monsters. Um, and like, yeah, some of them are really kind of gruesome. Like there's this random guy, just to pick a random example, called a pale fishman. And it's like this tiny little thing on screen that you barely... Just want to just, just pause it there for a second. Um, it's kind of a shame that they're not going to have an in-game bestiary type thing. Like uh, it, the amount of third-party stuff you kind of have to go through, you don't really have to, not, you don't have to. It's not the end of the world if you don't. But if you want, if you're the kind of player that wants to min-max everything, then it's something you really did need to use. Um, and you, if you needed to find out a lot of things within the game, because it wasn't really explained very well, then you did have to use third-party programs. Um, I had to use them even though I did, didn't really... After a certain amount of time, I started to having to use them. But the 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 idea of the specters and having a list of what you can have as specters, that this is a big thing for me because I, I love playing lich type characters. I love playing undead, a summoning, necromancer type characters. I play it on a lot of different games. It's either going to be a necromancer type guy or a druid is what I usually play. Anyone who's known me for a long time knows I love a druid build. But it's not coming out on the start of the game so i will be running uh the as i said earlier i'm gonna try and do a, like a chrono lich type build uh, speaking of animations i'm gonna go off script here from our list already and ask you about the cinematic uh was mm -hmm. something that i wanted to make sure i ask you about because it's kind of the first you know full like major cinematic that you know has really been revealed so far so was it difficult doing your first cinematic and did you guys get the result and the response you were really hoping for absolutely so it yes it was definitely very hard i mean obviously we've never done anything like that before um you know like i sort of had to i mean i, I wrote it myself and um like you know we there, we had there was a new zealand company um uh who we uh, who we commissioned to kind of uh, to work on it um and uh they've done um obviously some cool stuff before but i don't think they'd ever done like a thing that's this long um you know uh like, like on the on the sort of scale i guess um, so uh, that was certainly, you know, like I mean, they did a really good job, you know, right? Like it's they, the, 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 it's, it's really awesome. But um, yeah, I mean, look, it, it's kind of like the, 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 I was really concerned, right? Because obviously the comparison is like Blizzard and all the crazy cinematics like that. And to be honest, no one should compare the end. Like even for me, for me, before he even goes into this, the cinematic for Puff of Exiles Two that came out, I was actually way more interested in. I liked a lot more than Diablo Four, one hundred percent. I really liked the darkness and the mess. That like it was, it was really, 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 really nice. Like the the quality of the animation is not what Blizzard does, right? Like I mean, they. I thought the quality was pretty damn good, to be perfectly honest. I don't feel. I think he's kind of shooting it down a little bit, than more than he should, because I actually quite enjoyed the animation. I thought it was really good. You know, like we, we we do a lot of things in order to make it so that like it, it it is like I want the content to be really awesome, but it's like in terms of just the raw like you know like amount of millions of dollars that they probably spend on these cinematics, right? Like uh, we don't we're not at that level. Um, so, you don't need uh, to know, be at that level. There, you I, don't I need just, to be at really level hoping blizzard. that you could get the feeling of like the world and the kind of you know I want to make sure that people understand right from the word go that like there is a brutality here and uh, you know like we we we're not sort of pulling any punches when it comes to um, the kind of things you can expect in the game. Um, so that was kind of what I was going for. Um, there was a lot of brutality in it and it kind of like reminded me of like a more bioware old school bioware type of um like cinematic where it was it was dark there was some stuff that was going on there you got some you got some of the like intrigue there was some mystery to it you kind of want to see what the different characters are doing what they're there for um what the guy with the glowing eyes is i'm sure there's people that will know what those things are and the, the gods and stuff like that and the immortals and stuff like that but for people who don't know what they are like it, there's some like what is that guy why is that guy immortal why is he being so godlike and speaking to the guy like he's beneath him even though he just skewered him to a tree with an electric sword like people are going to ask those questions and i thought it was really really well done um and uh, the thing that i actually base it on um is i was thinking about a lot about um uh, you know the the riddick movies oh, um yes yeah. uh where you've kind of got the oh, thing well, you know the, the classic like you know like a team of guys go in all over confident and then uh, they get picked off one by one that's kind of what i was imagining i was like okay how are we going to do this and um the, uh, <laughs> that, so that's kind of what i was thinking about as, uh, as, as we were writing love me some riddick movies so for clarification, can you explain how deaths in map work? Because mm -hmm. there's been some confusion on why six portals, if question. you die, you can't go back in, as well as experience penalty still being a thing. So we'll start with those two. 
Yeah, so basically when you die on a map, um, you can't resurrect uh, in, in, in the map. And I think that that is, okay, I mean, like, we, we discussed this quite a lot, right? Because we were like, we've got six portals, we could have it um, so that you can revive six times like you did in PoE 1. But the thing we were really worried about is just compromising the combat. Like, we just really don't want to make it so that you um, just, just, you know, effectively, like, I mean, obviously there's a limited level of cheese, but it's still cheese on the boss as far as we were concerned. Um, so the reason for six portals is it's still important that you're able to pull out six inventories worth of uh, items from a map if you're by yourself, you know, like you still want to be able to do that. Um, uh, and yet we also don't want to make it just one portal with unlimited uses, because once again, that limitation on like the amount of stuff you can pull out of a map, I think, is also kind of one of those things that's important. And there's also a slightly more mundane reason, which um, like seems a bit silly, but you know, the, all the map devices that we've already sold, those are microtransactions that we need to support going forward in the store, uh, and all of those have six portals. We can't really change that, so uh, you know, uh, that's kind of just like one of those things that we just kind of have to maintain backwards compatibility for for that reason. So um, yeah, there, there was a lot of discussion around this though, but um, at the end of the day, the main thing that, that won out as far as is we just don't want to compromise the combat. We want to make sure that if you know if you're going to kill a boss, it has to be like one you know one life. You have to survive it. You actually have to properly kill it. Um, but of course, we can make those encounters harder because of the fact we don't have um, uh, you know a, a map boss in every area. So um, you know, we get we get to ideally have that uh, that still being that adds a lot of um, like uh, maybe some people won't be happy with that. I'm not really sure. It really it really depends. Um, I'll probably get some comments down below about how that might be like uh, th there should be more than one chance but i think it adds some urgency it adds some like some real like if i if there's a boss i need to be ready to go into that map i need to be ready to go into that map i need to get ready the like, gear up i need to make sure i'm the strongest i could possibly be i need to make sure i'm the strongest i can possibly be before i go into that map and i love the fact that you have to get to be able to like set that up i really do love that idea because you can only go into that map once and once you die on that map that map is no longer accessible again as long as you don't die in the map the map doesn't close and i think the map closes after you actually kill the boss and then it just like puts that map out of there but it might not be that case i'm not 100 percent sure on that maybe it's that the boss won't respawn but the mobs will but they only want you to get a certain amount of stuff, as he just said, out of uh, a certain amount of items out of each map. So maybe it does close off once you finish the boss and come out of there. Uh, what about experience penalty when dying? Is that still going to be a thing with this? Um, you know, that's actually a very good question. Um, when we so we removed it from the campaign at the point where we um made it so that we added checkpoints and everything. And then at the time we were like, oh, but in maps you get six portals, so therefore um we still don't have it now. I actually. It's still there right now, but I, it's not something I've like thought about, honestly, for like a little while now. So it's probably good that I have another conversation with Mark about it just to see whether we still need it. The reason why I think I would still like it is because as, not necessarily, it's not really at the beginning of maps, but as you get towards the race towards 100, having death like set you back um, so that you have to actually build somewhat defensively when you're like racing for the for 100, I think is kind of important. So the experience panel is really serving a really important role there. But I suppose the question is like, it may not be as necessary when you're talking early maps, right? Like it's really, it's really that from like 90 to 100 where it kind of starts to matter that the death penalty is there as a thing. So um, we could theoretically think about like, you know, I mean, basically what I'm saying with that is like we could fiddle around with the equation for it a little bit. But yeah, the, the purpose of it really is to make sure that as you're um, uh, coming towards the end, you know, as you're getting to level 100, that like a mistake actually costs you something rather than just being like a nothing in the road. Um, and all That's actually amazing. That's really, really, really important for me, at least uh, because peop when people are rushing to the top, you can rush straight to the top and you can rush to 100. Yeah. And it just never felt like there was anything in the way stopping you from being able to continue anymore but the the fact that people are actually going to have to think more defensively the fact that they're going to have to think about more about the strategy and what they're going to do and they didn't just blast through it it's going to show a lot of people those players who are really really good at the game and who are really really good at thinking about thinking forward and thinking about what they're doing i'm not one of those guys i'm not going to be rushing uh, well I'm not going to be rushing to 100, but I'm going to be playing a lot. So I'll probably get like quite a lot of levels in a small amount of time uh, to get up through there. But it's going to it's going to be really good to see the ladders and who gets the first to 100 and stuff like that, especially with these kind of changes in place. In order for that, uh, in order for that race to 100 to actually be meaningful, um, because, you know, like if you can just grind your face into the wall and still not lose any experience and just like die, of, you know, it's like you get to 100, but you died like 2000 times. It's like, well, did you really achieve the same thing as the guy who didn't die at all? Uh, so. See, exactly. That's 100%. You can kind of see who's got, who is the person who's actually doing it 
in a, in a better way rather than just the person who again had died two thousand times rather than the person who didn't die at all and made it in the like I don't know number five for example uh, maybe the person who died two thousand times though is going to take a hell of a lot longer to do it because of the resets and going in and going out but it is it is a really good change so, you know that that's kind of the reason why it exists uh, the follow up questions to this little chunk we got here is loot. And what mm -hmm. happens when you're going in the party play in maps and what happens to the, the, the loot there in the loot split between the parties mm -hmm. as well as what happens if X player dies? What is the loot to that player? So, okay, a few things about this. So number one, uh, we have changed how the loot scaling works for party members. And what I've actually tried to do is be a lot more intelligent with regard to what types of items do you want to see more of and what types of items um, don't matter uh, about having more of. So an example of this is like, um, if you're talking about currency, right? Obviously you want uh, double the amount of currency we've got two players because all players want to take currency. But this is also true for things like rings and amulets because rings and amulets aren't kind of like uh, specific to any one like person, right? Like, 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 I mean, obviously the mods can make them like the way, but everyone wants a ring, everyone wants an amulet if one drops. Um, so effectively, we also do plus 100% for things like that as well. But if you're talking about armors, well, there are six different armor types, and so if you look on average, um, you only need to increase the number of um, armors by 50% in order to be able to... Oh, wait, is it even 50%? It might be... It might... I might be doing the math wrong here, but effectively, there's an amount of armor increase that you need in order to kind of on average make it so that everyone's still getting the stuff they want because certain players only want certain um, armor parts of the pie, right, due to the strength, dex, int thing. And uh, for weapon types, there's even more weapon types. So the chance that two players are actually using the same weapon type um, is generally much lower. So effectively, what that means is that we cannot increase weapons by the same amount that we increase other stuff. So what that means is, is that when you... Um, the, the sum total of all of that means that the stuff on the ground from each player increases by some number, like 28%, if you actually look at it in raw drops. Um, but the actual, what, what makes up that 28% is like way more of the stuff you actually want and not as much of the garbage that you don't want uh, in order to make it so that you don't get the crazy spam on the ground with party play that you uh, previously uh, might, not, might have gotten. Um, so I think that that system works very well in terms of just making it so that you, um, uh, you, you get the right items. And I guess it just goes to the general philosophy that we have of uh, we're trying to not drop as many things, but make sure the things we do drop are more important and better as you, um, as you go up. So um, that's kind of like the, uh, yeah, as I said, just part of that philosophy. That's actually kind of important. Uh, but the thing is with Path of Exile there's a lot of meta builds and a lot of players are going to be playing the same build it's, it was seen it depends on how you like to play the game but there's going to be maybe five to ten meta builds of uh, all the different classes and there could be like a meta build for the ascendancies on top of that um, depending on how, and there's depending on what you want to play your theme your thematic stuff uh, you're going to have a lot of things but what if like there's just going to be one sh single strongest meta build that it's just over the top of everyone. Everyone's going to be playing and all the items drop. Uh, the, like, And you're not going to get the items as a group. I'm not really... Like, I mean, you can just say that the players can just decide if they're going to group with four of the same class or the same meta build, then it's going to be their bloody problem, to be honest. But it's kind of a weird one. Two players play and, and one player dies. Oh, what yeah, yeah. To the loot on the ground that belongs to that player? Um, so I think that, so we usually use temporary, I think temporary allocation is still, I'm pretty sure the rules for this are basically the same as what they were in POE 1, um, at least at, this, at the moment. Um, so basically, if you've got temporary allocation on, then the allocation will disappear and then the loot will just become allocated to, uh, you know, to be free for all once uh, the timer expires. Uh, and if it's permanent allocation, then um, obviously it stays uh, like that. Although we definitely should make it free for all once you die even if it's permanent i assume uh when, when I, I don't know if we've actually done that uh, oh it does work that way in that case it'll just work then so it's just the same as in POE one in this regard <laughs> um so uh that, that that should be fine um so uh yeah i mean effectively like that um so yeah i wouldn't say it's like changed a huge amount in that particular regard uh last one has to do with trials now we've only seen sanctum and ultimatum version mm -hmm. the 2.0 version of it mm -hmm. uh, so the real question is two two ones one is the sanctum no hit run and mm -hmm. Um, the questions are, what happens if one player dies, if two players goes in, and the other one is the reward system there as well, I guess. Okay, so this is one of these tricky technical questions that Mark would probably be better at answering because he knows the exact details. So let me think about that. Um, I don't know that I've even had a discussion about what happens to the rewards in Sanctum. Now, generally speaking, of course, when we're doing things like this, when you're paying party play with a thing like Sanctum, um, the... Uh, the, like the map, uh, well, sorry, the, 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 to be technical, the map owner, but you know, the, effectively the person who who paid the cost, the person who uh, put the key in, um, they're the person who kind of gets like the the the, the progress. So they usually get to be the one who decides what the uh, what actions to take and what rooms to go to. 
I believe though that if you um, want to go through and ascend, that there are like you can both do the ascendancy. So that means if you want to do like the ascension in a party, then that's absolutely fine. You get the reward there. Um, but I believe that the items that come from like key, uh, the, the the chests and stuff like that. Um, I believe that they belong to the person who paid the cost of the coin that they that they used to enter. Um, is my is my understanding of that. I could be wrong about this, but I think that's correct. So uh, yeah, there's a few. The, I, I'm on, I'm sorry about this. I don't have like completely clear information about some of that stuff. But um, yeah, uh, that that's one of those things that Mark tends to be uh, often addressing uh, as far as working up those things. Mark really is like so. So I, one thing I should mention is that Mark plays like. I could be wrong about this, but I think like 90% of the time when he's playing, he's playtesting multiplayer, so he's the one who really cares about getting all that multiplayer stuff exactly right. Whereas when I'm playing, I'm like a solo player all the way, right? Like I just, for whatever reason, I'm just like a solo player. So This is exactly the same as me. I am a completely solo player. I might play some stuff eventually with some players, but I'm, I'm a solo player through and through. Ideally, with the both of us paying attention here, uh, we should make sure that things are good in both solo and multiplayer. But um, yeah, he, uh, you know, he, he's got a bunch of designers he likes to play with. Um, you know, I mean, you know, like the design team effectively. Like he plays multiplayer with the design team all the time. So um, he uh, he's the one who usually sorts out these like specific little multiplayer details. All so right. since we're talking about loot, there is one question that people have related to loot due to some early access footage we've seen, where there's like tier one. Tier two, yeah, 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 tier yeah. three, advanced yeah, yeah, yeah. gear, et cetera. So I was hoping you could break down what that's referencing. Yeah, so effectively, um, when you get um, uh, magic find gear, so like increased chance of rarity, we wanted to try and make it so that the gear that you get from that um, is better and not just in the way of just getting like, you know, more more rares. I mean, it does do that as well. Uh, don't get me wrong. Like you're still getting more rares, more uniques and so on. But we wanted to make it so that you could scale uh, rarity by a huge amount, not necessarily in a character, but also because, uh, you know, when, when you've got a, a monster uh, that you've juiced with various map mechanics, all of that stuff is adding rarity and not quantity. Yep. Um, so if we need to make sure that rarity is something that um that really increases the power so um the way we do that is there's five uh and i don't know whether rishi will be unhappy about me spoiling the exact inner workings of this but um there are five tiers uh to start with that you don't see that you can't see that change anything because those don't change anything about unidentified items but they do change the percentage chances that you get uh certain things so they uh for example you're getting um <laughs> dm's cat just keeps wanting to jump in the bloody screen there uh, you know, chances to upgrade currency to higher types of currency. You're getting um, like the chances of uh, not not spawning items with uh, base types that are lower level than what you would need. So effectively, sort of clamping the base types that you're going to get into like a smaller range at the top, uh, and, so, and like and these kind of things, while also increasing like uh, you know magic and rare and uniques and stuff like that. It also increases the uh, like it starts to open up like uh, those tiers start to open up like what types of uniques can go into the pool. And to be clear here, there's always a chance that you can upgrade through these tiers regardless of how much magic find you have. Right? You don't need magic find to get this. It's just that magic find is effectively increasing the chance that you upgrade through them. And in total, there's actually ten tiers overall. But a tier um, at tier uh, five, it starts to uh, modify the, um, uh, the, the the properties of unidentified items, and that's why we have to start marking uh, the the uh, the rares as being like. And so that's what. So when it says T two, that actually means that's like T five internally of what it's rolled. And then so the tiers going up from there, each of them say you know T two, T three, T four, T five. And um, what those uh, what the reason why we have to say that is because. When this item dropped, we uh, clamped the mods that it can get to be uh, in the upper tiers. And the higher tier you get, the higher they can go. So if you get a um, uh, if you get a T5 uh, rare, the mods that it can have are from a very very tiny uh, portion of them, right at the top uh, of all of the of all the tiers of those mods. So you know that the rolls you're going to be seeing, like the life you're going to get and the damage you're going to get and this kind of thing, are going to be uh, top notch uh, when you see that. Um, so effectively, um, uh, the, uh, the if you if and, and and the reason why I think that's important to show is because you kind of want people to feel like, okay, um, like because the number of items that drop aren't really increasing, you need a way to see on the screen when something drops, like how valuable is the thing that I just saw. And so showing those tiers on the res also really has that effect of like, okay, like if you see like, you know, five or six T5 rares drop, you know you got a really good hit, whereas if you see a bunch of like T2s, you know you didn't get such a good one. So um, that's kind of important, I think, just to get that feeling of, uh, of, 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 of being important. It's actually really interesting because we've been fighting so much this thing of like like the way that you made like the, a way you can make drops in an action RPG feel good is just by dropping tons of crap on the ground um but the problem is that like it really is kind of a like an annoying element because like while it can feel good it's like it's just it it, it 
people want then you know they they want to use loot filters and they want to use all that stuff and it's like okay well i mean that's great and everything and we'll support that and that's fine but like ideally we can actually make it so that you don't have to worry about it in the first place and so you need to find a way to give people the hit of dopamine uh without having to just do that by like dropping literally covering the screen now, i mean there's still that's sad i i'm not a massive fan of the massive amount of stuff because most of the time when you get to the end game and you're looking for items and you're looking for currencies and stuff it's all dropping on the floor and you're only picking out one or two things and the rest of the stuff that drops is almost pointless like it's literally almost pointless there's a lot of stuff where you're just going to be sitting there and you're like right going through this list and there's one thing i want to pick up the fact that they're maybe going to have less items drop, but more important items is going to be really good. But also the fact that they have the different tiers of items, which have the different mod allocations that could go into the, the tier that it's, it's, it's I mean, it's, that, that's some mathematical levels of shit. I'm sure someone's going to figure that out. But the fact that they do have that and the fact that you can still get better items because of the tier in tier 10 tier in game system. It's, you're still going to get the same feeling without the screen bloat, the drop item bloat. Room for like dropping a lot of stuff, right? I mean, like we want to make sure bosses feel like, you know, there's a good, good list of stuff there. But it's like ideally you get that by the value of the items. Like you know that the value of that stuff is really good. And I suppose on some level, item filters are even sort of achieving that anyway, because if you're using a filter to get like, you're not seeing very much anyway. So it really is all about the value. So it's like it's impossible. We just need to make sure that the game is doing that as a matter of course rather. Yeah. So <laughs> since you bring up the concept of loot filters, this was a question we we're going to ask later. So I might as well bring it up now. Is that like official confirmation mm. loot filters sounds like yeah, yeah. Su support yeah yeah. Okay. yeah so there's support loot filters is another way of doing it but i like the fact that they're working more in game about that as well so <laughs> there's six classes uh that are coming to early access some of them mm -hmm. have already been showcased but they're not in there namely the druid and the huntress so i think people are curious mm -hmm. about are they coming soon what's going on with these classes yeah so they'll definitely be coming relatively soon i'm not going to promise a date but uh, certainly the next two classes you see will be those two like in terms of an early access um we just at some point look we really wanted that's really important for me i want to play a druid i want to roll i've seen a video i've seen the video where the bear, bear just rolls i really want i kind of I mean, it's, it's kind of a stupid thing to really like the look of, but I, I really enjoyed that and I really like the look of it. It did remind me a lot of the Druid in Diablo 4, to be honest, the way that it runs and the way that it ran around and did ground pounds and slams, kind of like what the Warrior does, but as a bear, there are going to be two other... Uh, transformations that you get uh, two other shape-shifting forms wolf is definitely there i don't know what the third one is yet and we don't know anything about the ascendancies yet but it's definitely be something that i want to play when they do release the druid to launch with those two classes we expected that we would be launching into early access with those two classes but um at some point it was just like um you know the, the we we and I think I've even said this before, but we really underestimated what it takes to finish a class, I think. Um, like, uh, it, it, and it, it takes a lot. Uh, you know, it, because, it, and the thing is, it's, it's like you make a bunch of skills and you're like, oh, yeah, you know, made the skills. That's the class, right? But in POE, it really isn't because, um, you know, you need to make sure they can all be supported well. You need to make sure there's uniques that support it, that there's passive tree stuff that supports it. It's like a whole thing of like getting all that stuff into a good state. It's like, plus also the skills, plus also thinking about all the stuff that can happen with other classes and like, how does it tie in with all the mechanics? Like, it's just a Goliath task um so i think the huntress and the druid are not far away um the druid we still have one form um that we still need to uh get finished um so uh there's like uh, that there's still some more skill work to do there um the huntress uh i think we mostly have like working prototypes that we're happy with for most of the skills but like there's still a little bit more to do but yeah it's just all that other sort of finishing work around like tying it into all the other systems listen jonathan just just take your time take your time get things right and then release it as you've always done with path of exile yes you've you've missed some nerfs that needed to be done to certain things but you always work at stuff and you always make sure that everything's working within each other so just keep it that way don't be like everyone else just just take your time relax chill create a character create the class and then release it to us when it's ready yeah like when you say one form could you like give us a number how many forms are we talking about so there's three so there's three primary forms for the druid but there's a couple of other like random shape shifts around um like the kind of uh, I mean, you, you actually saw one of them right there's the shape shift on the yeah. uh on the on, on the ascendancy the, the demon form um so there's a few other things bits and pieces like that around the place but um yeah this the druid sort of has three primary forms and um that's because we want to try and um, like the um that's really cool actually i really like the idea that the you it from what it seems like to me you'll be able to go around and get some shape-shifting forms throughout the campaign play, maybe from bosses or something like that. Kind of like how you get into Spectres as a witch, where you can grab some of the monsters. I, th I think that's what he's saying, and I really like that idea. 
other classes, we want to make sure that there's combos between the forms as well. Um, like there aren't just, it's not just like a reskin melee, right? Like each of the forms kind of has like skills that have like things and we want to make sure there's mechanics between them that they can kind of, you know, the, 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 get the cross class kind of, even within the archetypes of the class um, synergy like that. So um, yeah, the, uh, the, 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 the one that, um, no, maybe I'm not going to spoil it actually. Yeah, I'm not going to say anything about it. Uh, <laughs> I thought we were going to get something there. I was like, I've been more than welcome to. <laughs> yeah, actually, one other thing I might mention just because um, I don't know if it's like hugely well known, but um, the starting area of the tree for each class actually changes. There's actually three variants of uh, the starting part of each, uh, of each tree for each class. So effectively, um, we actually did this first when we were um, playing the Witch and the Sorceress. So effectively, if you're, a, if you're a Witch, you get one variant of the starting area. And if you're a sorceress, you get another variant. And then if you're neither of those two classes, then uh, you get a, there's a third variant that can go there so that all the other classes, when they go there, they get slightly different stats again. Um, and uh, the reason for that is because um, the, the initial reason we did the witch-sorceress thing is because there's this problem that you have with um, where players, when they see a node that's got multiple things on it and one of the things does not affect them, um, people just really don't want to allocate a node like that, even if the values on it are the same as what they otherwise would have gotten. So when we first did this, when we had one variant for everyone, um, the, uh, the, the witch sorceress nodes were like plus 8% uh, or whatever, minion and spell damage, right? And we found that sorceresses, even though a sorceress would have just like would otherwise get just 8% spell damage, sorceresses would just not take that because it's got this minion thing on it and they don't want that. So um, by having the trees be separate, it just sort of prevents that problem um, immediately. And... Uh, I, I kind of don't like because I wanted to run a sorceress minion build. That's that's exactly what I want to run. I want to run a chrono lich build. I want to have a chrono mage with minions build. That's what I want to run. And it would have been nice to have the 8% minion, 8% spell damage for that build. That would have been really nice for me. Might have been a little bit overpowered because I'll have the damage bonuses for both whilst using both. I can see why they did it. But for me, that's kind of fucking dumb that people would actually not take it even though like logically speaking they'll have the same bonus regardless it's kind of a bit dumb for me but better so um there's, there's not going to be anything in the starting areas that you like don't like stats you just can't otherwise get right it's not gonna be like that but it's just more about like tweaking numbers and make a few cases like the sorceress and which where we just have to make sure that you know for, 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 for new player clarity we can make sure that it's like just the stuff they're going to want and not i'm really hoping there's still the the minion damage bonus that you can get as the sorceress like i really hope that's still going to be in there that's fair. On the topic of uh, power and mm -hmm. juicing things up, mm -hmm. uh, something that we've seen in many games throughout the years is how games start, ARPG games, they start off kind of slow mm -hmm. and, and more of a strategic if, a gameplay mm -hmm. approach. And then the, the best patch just comes through, the game evolves, mm -hmm. the, mm -hmm. the meta of power creeping and speed clearing just goes to crazy numbers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then everyone's upset when they're then toned down or the number squish is happening. Mm -hmm. So I guess the follow-up question would be, if what are the plans? Because I'm very confident there are plans to manage severe increase in power creep moving forward so you don't end up in that category where you're one-shotting the entire screen. Um, I, I think that we just have to be careful. And honestly, I would say that in PoE 1, we've shown that we can... Uh, I mean, look, PoE 1 obviously did get pretty crazy, but at the same time, like, we had a lot of years, like a lot of years, where things kind of didn't go, didn't, 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 weren't like that. And I think that effectively, I believe we can still maintain that. Um, our numbers don't scale as fast as some games do, and they don't go quite as exponential, which means that we're not going to have to be worrying about trillions of damage or anything like that. Uh, <laughs> That was a complete shit on Diablo 4. <laughs> like, I'm, I can look at Darth's face. <laughs> that's, not exactly what's, that's exactly what was being said. You know, having, um, you know, and like, it's, 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 uh... <laughs> He's still going. <laughs> I haven't heard them actually take a little jab on Diablo like that before. I haven't seen them do that yet. That's actually, it's quite refreshing. Uh, it can be, it can, it, so I don't think we're going to have to ever do a number squish or anything like that. Like, we've never really felt like the need to worry about that. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, it's just a matter of keeping keeping on top of it. And there are certain people in the company who just, um, you know, are just, are just very careful about stuff. So I, I mentioned Rishi a couple of times. Like, you know, he's kind of the one who uh, does uh, most of the work for the item system and so on. So he, he – and, and, he, and he's and, – and, he is definitely a force of conservativeness when it comes to uh, when, when it comes to like making sure that things don't go crazy, and so that's really good to have because it means that like me and Mark are often the ones being like, no, no, numbers high, numbers high, and he's like, like, no, no, keep them low, keep them low. So I think together with that, we kind of come to some kind of medium ground where we don't uh, kind of uh, get things too out of control. You know what I love about that answer? What I actually love about the answer is the fact that that he's saying happily 
that there are people in the team that disagree and agree on certain things and the, the dynamic that they have where they can kind of go in the middle instead of having like one way go one way and depending on how loud and how vocal the, uh, the person is it can change a lot of things in the direction of making a game. We've seen it very a, a lot really recently when it comes to some of the RPGs that are released, where they've gone in one direction instead of a, just meeting in the middle and having a like a neutral aspect for something that's such a big deal. And the fact that he's happily talking about, look, we have this guy who's, uh, who wants to keep things a little bit lower. We have this guy, you, us two, who want to keep it a little bit higher. And they've come and worked it out in the middle. For me, that's really refreshing, really nice to hear. You mentioned this in the, I think it was the Ziggy Q&A afterwards, but that the early access server is going to be maintained. So meaning yeah. you're going to have leagues, you know, separate, but then the OG one will go back there. And that is going to be separate from like the Eterno or Core server as well, yeah, right? Yeah. There will be an early access yeah, yeah. one. So a question for you I have then is, uh, the early access characters, one, I'm assuming you can still, you know, play them, et cetera, on the server. Or, oh, yeah. And two, can you still create characters on the early access server afterwards or are they kind of grandfather then and make sure you have all the characters you want for the, the server um i think we probably won't allow you to create new characters there just because um uh i think that even just if you're a new player and you're like oh you've got place i mean i suppose what we could do is allow you to create characters there if you've already got one there um that would be an option but um i kind of don't really think we need to do that like as i said the main reason we're doing that is just because if you're someone who's like not even really paying attention to what's going on and you're just like you've got some level 20 character and you're like oh i just want to keep playing the game right like, we don't want to disrupt that person's life too much um so i think that that's why we don't want to just get rid of all that stuff completely um so uh yeah, I mean, the thing is, though, that, like, you know, if you're playing a high-level character, almost certainly your build is going to be bricked in some regard, right? Like, there'll be some element of it that got modified or something like that, you know? Um, but then, of course, you'll also have, like, uh, legacy items, um, which will be kind of presumably funky, assuming that we have to modify balance, which no doubt we will have to do. Um, so, uh, yeah, like, you'll have all that stuff, too. So, I mean, look, uh, there's just no reason to delete the data, right? Like, we're not going to make an effort to make sure that everything is, you know, like, is, is uh, uh, still works, like, in terms of your builds and everything, but we're also not going to do anything that we don't have to do in terms of deleting it either, right? Like, we might as well just let it be there. Um, so, uh, you know, and it's also just, like, nice to have, like, oh, here's this character I got, you know, back in the day. Like, it's nice to just have that around. So, uh, you know, it's just a little memory of that. So, um, yeah, I, there's just no reason for us to delete it. That's a pretty good uh, point, actually, that, about the, the people that just don't really care about what's going on. Uh, I think it's good that they're going to keep it that way, but I do think they need to make sure that there's warnings in place and there's, like, pop-ups that come up when you're logging into the game that this is a legacy server and uh, it's going to be something that's not going to... It's going to be maintained but not really pushed really hard then you might not be able to create new characters on it and you should go over to the new realms the new servers etc when that is game is fully released in six months time uh a very common question i believe this was seen is shown in the reveal but bricking the atlas as you can if you die in a map you can't do it again um <laughs> So in the start, what happens when you break if you break all the stars? <laughs> all around, yeah, yeah. So we have the ability to re effect, effectively restart your atlas. Um, if you completely cut yourself off, you can uh, do that. Um, I don't remember what way it is to do that, but they, it certainly came up when you were first talking about. It. There just has to be some way uh, to allow you to uh, effectively restart your atlas from scratch if you need to. Um, I would hope that most people. That's really good. I'm really, I'm really glad they said that. It was one of my worries when I heard about the uh, that that you could literally cut yourself off from the entire map. There had to be some way of restarting it i think it's a really good idea that you can you, you not that you can like go back to a little bit of a step before but you restart the whole map itself i think that's going to be a really big thing there might be some people that don't like that because that depends on how far they've got into the atlas because effectively the atlas is an infinite according to developers and certain things so like they could be doing this for six months and then suddenly block themselves in because they they've met some point where they can't do it or maybe they just like eventually you're just going to be strong enough that you don't really matter but uh, the fact that it goes to reset it to the beginning that's going to be a good thing especially during the beginning of the game where there's going to be a lot of new players and there's a lot of people that don't really understand how it really works it's going to be really good for that to be a thing piece of content uh that could uh that could definitely cut you off so you know there, there are some consequences for death like um you know uh, and, and with that in mind, it obviously means that things like the experience penalty at low level, certainly we don't need to be... Uh... There will be a lot of people complaining about the consequences of death and it actually cutting off whole areas of the map and you might not be able to get a boss that you'd usually get, which has a unique item that will drop. And that that's probably going to piss some people off. I can see it already. We'll have to see how that goes. Um, they can only create that map one time. Um, because otherwise, uh, you know, like w at, at what point do you say, well, the map is completed? 
Um, like there always has to be things, like there always has to be some kind of condition like that. So by effectively just having the rule of like a map can only be created by you one time, uh, it means that, you know, yeah, the, the valuable stuff we can put on there, like monsters and things like that. Like if you could, you could have mods on the Alice that are like, you know, increases the number of rares by a ton and that's fine because you know that you don't have a situation where someone just kills half of them and then uh, dies on purpose and then goes back in and kills them again. You know, that kind of stuff. Like effectively, like we have, that's the kind of exploit. They would find a meta, the, the players would find a meta on how to reset it enough times that they're still going to find a way for this to be abused they, they, they always do they always will someone will find a way you did find them all so um we want to make, it, all of those encounters they do have loot that you get like there's still a reason to do all of them because they have their own unique stuff as well but effectively if you then but if you do uh miss some of them you're still getting some of those really crucial things like gem uh, uh skill gem upgrades and things like that that's really good that's gonna be a, that's gonna be a lot better for people who are uh, but it kind of like it's gonna make it easier for people, players that are rushing through uh, if they want to just pick up what they need without going and grabbing some of those uniques and stuff but like for players who like miss out on things or are not really massively into the expiration they're still they're not going to miss some of those crucial progressive moments where you can get better gems better skills etc etc so it, it's definitely a lot player a lot better for there's a lot of new player friendly stuff i'm seeing here Right, so I'm going to put a part one ending right there. There's still another hour of the video to go. There's a lot of stuff to go through. I don't want to pe put in like three hour long videos where I'm just, just speaking over the top of it. So look forward to part two. Make sure to like and sub for all of your Path of Exiles content. Fly safe and avoid local chess games.